Good evening again. I am so excited to spend another evening with you all for the ASF Virtual Palooza. You are once again in for a treat tonight. I know that you all turned uh, tuned in to see what t-shirt I'm wearing tonight. And because of our amazing presenter, I had to represent one of her t-shirts. As you <laughs> could see, she could tell you more about it, but she has actually an awesome line with Angelman today. But she sent me this shirt. Gosh, Lizzie, I think it was like a month into my new role, maybe. Um, yeah. And I have been very, very proud to wear it. So I had to represent tonight to wear my awesome <laughs> shirt. So you guys, if you've been on the Virtual Palooza before, um, everything I'm about ready to share is uh, not new to you, but always have to share it for all of our new people that are joining tonight. Um, if you have any burning questions during the session um, that you would like to ask, you can do so in, in the chat box or through the question pane. You can ask questions the whole time. And when we're done with, when uh, Lizzie's done with the presentation, we'll get to a question and answer time. We'll be recording this too, so you can always come back to it. And for those of you um, who have been joining us, I think this is the first night we actually have a handout. So if you look in your, your scroll, your pane there, you'll see something that says handout. Uh, Lizzie has made an awesome handout for you that she'll explain during her session, but it's really, really great tool. So go ahead and download that and keep that somewhere and if you can't do it tonight, we'll have it on the website as well for you. So I'm going to jump right in because um, I'm really excited uh, and uh, to get started. And so I want to introduce my amazing and beautiful friend, Lizzie Sorvia. She is not only um, a beautiful mother to an individual with Angelman syndrome, she also has spent a lot of time advocating for this community. If you aren't familiar with Angelman today, you should be, and you should go in and Google it now. Make sure you join, um, join the Facebook page because she has been doing a great job of really informing the community on different topics, especially around diet and sleep, which is some areas that she's really excels in. And then she also is the author and the creator of the Amazon special needs um, page, which I'm hoping she'll talk about during this session as well, so I won't share any of it. So I'm excited for you guys to hear from my dear friend. So I'm going to turn off my camera and pass it to you. Lizzie, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. So let's see. Are you going to? I am. We're good to go. Thank you so much for that. Now, do I move the slides or are you going to do that? I'll do it for you. Okay, perfect. So hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I wanted to bring you my top 10 products for living life with an angel. So um, we can move on to the next slide. Now, the world of special needs was definitely uncharted territory for me. Uh, setting out on this journey, it was a challenge for everyone. And I was determined to give Nathan the best that I could so he could achieve all that he could, whatever that was going to be. Um, this world of special needs was very new to us. I had absolutely no experience. My husband didn't have any experience either. We lived in Florida. All of my family was in California. And I didn't have a clue on what to do, how to get started, what my son needed. And um, I just knew that I needed to get my son help. And so I'm so grateful again to this amazing community that has helped me along the way. I'm so incredibly grateful for all of the parents that have come before me and have given me uh, advice when I needed it. The online community on Facebook um, is amazing because I just log in, we ask a question and there's tons of people that can respond to us and help us out on, on, the, on our journey and, and give us their experience. And so I truly appreciate that. All of my mom warriors, you know where you are, Amanda, up in that shirt. Thank you so much. But that's truly what I embrace is, um, you know, I couldn't sit around and just worry for my son. I had to take action. And so on my journey, um, I was first presented with the problem, right? Uh, and then I had to find the solution. And so I'll give you an example. The problem first started when he escaped from his car seat. Now, how many of you can uh, 
had, had, you have experience with that. Your angel just gets out of everything. They're little Houdinis. And so I had to figure out a way to solve that problem, which I did. And I'm going to share that with you guys today. And again, another problem that I have was Nathan was escaping from his bed. He once climbed out of his crib and then he crashed to the floor screaming, crying. Um, we had to rush him to the hospital to make sure that everything was okay. But then I knew I needed to have a safe enclosed bed and a, a safe environment for him. So again, my solution, I'm gonna share that with you guys tonight. So, that is when I found the Kaiser Bed and Bed. And I'm gonna show you guys that. And I've also done a video too. So again, when I was presented with all of these problems, I had to find a solution. And then that brings me back full circle to When You Learn, Teach by Maya Angelou. I truly embrace that, so. All right, now disclaimer, my friends. The approval of medical equipment and supplies may be different based on each individual insurance company and state Medicaid programs. This webinar is for informational purposes. We cannot guarantee approval. So I just wanted to share that disclaimer with you. Um, I am in Florida, so that may be a different state than you're in. And I am referencing um, the states. So it also may be different based on the country that you live in as well. I understand that we have an international audience. So I'm giving you my best information based on my own experience. All right, now tonight I have created for you guys a free PDF download. I thank you so much for joining us. Um, for my screen, it's on the right, but Amanda talked about it a little bit ago and it's under handouts. Um, it's called the ASF Download Medical Equipment. And what it is, is your step-by-step -step guide on how to go about getting medical equipment and supplies covered by insurance or Medicaid. And photo credit, thank you so much to Sayoko Murray's and her adorable son, Jack. All right. And so we all know that life with an angel is very challenging and having the right medical equipment and supplies can help improve your daily life. This is something that we can do right now to help us. Um, making sure their needs are met ultimately makes life easier on you, the caretaker. And caring for an angel is also physically demanding. So use the equipment and save your back. We are in this for the long haul. All okay, so the first item is I wanted to highlight for you guys adaptive clothing. And this is a very hot topic on uh, some of our groups online. Um, if we have and I'll just share from my experience with Nathan. He loves to take off his shirts all the time. Now, thank goodness we live in Florida, but um, you know, in school, that's really not acceptable. So there's uh, a lot of adaptive clothing, like the blue, blue t-shirt that you see. It's a onesie underneath, and then it just looks like a regular t-shirt on top. So under pants, you're not gonna really know the difference, but they're not gonna have, uh, they're not gonna be able to take off that shirt in the middle of class. And another thing is the inescapable pajamas. A lot of us um, need them to stay in their pajamas at night and stay out of their diapers. There is shorts, um, there's incontinence underwear, and there's also clothing for feeding, for feeding tube uh, shirts and onesies. So, and again, um, there's products for kids and adults. So number two is sensory toys. Now these are important because it really helps them to relax, improve focus and calm down. Um, one of the things that I wanted to share with you is a list of these websites. These are really good resources. And I have to share with you, number the, uh, the first one is the Ultimate Amazon Special Needs Shop. And this is my project. This is my baby. Uh, Amazon invited me to create a shop and I could, 
can Did I hear? Yeah, can I just jump in really quick? Because a lot of people are asking, just so you guys know, we will provide this PowerPoint with these links in there after the session. So don't, they, they, were, they were wondering if they were going to get these links. So yes, we will provide that after. Okay, perfect. So um, yes, and that's important because the Ultimate Amazon Special Needs Shop can be accessed only with this link. Um, you can't go onto amazon.com and search. It's just because Amazon gave me this specific link to use. And I have categories. I've, I've been able to categorize uh, a lot of the products to make it easy to help you shop. So everything from sensory toys, adaptive equipment, adaptive bikes, adaptive swings, feeding tools, um, safety products, books, supplements, you name it. I have it laid out easy for you to find. And um, there's other resources as well. So when I show you a lot of these products tonight, um, I source them from all of these other websites. And as you start on your journey to figure out what equipment that you would like, um, you can look on these websites to get ideas about the products that are out there to help you when you are working with your doctor to find the right equipment and your therapist um, to also work with you with the equipment. So that will be uh, in the download that's available to you guys a little bit later. But that's your resources. All right, and number three is activity chairs. Now I have the Riften activity chair. It's the purple chair here. and. I have to tell you, I absolutely love it. Um, we use it for Nathan when he has therapy. We He uses it to eat with us at the table. We just pull it right up to the table and it's amazing. Um, so these, can, these chairs can be used both in the home and in the classroom. They help with feeding, support focus during therapy, and they're a safe way to relax while playing on their iPad. Nathan loves to do that and he goes and climbs in his chair and and will get on his iPad and so these are just some samples of of great chairs that are out there to to keep them safe and next slide number four is incontinence products now there's a lot of questions around this because um, a lot of you don't know that you can get incontinence products paid for by insurance and um, they could include briefs, pull-ups, overnight diapers, booster pads, wipes, gloves, and even bed pads. So all of that would also be considered under incontinence products for you. and. Um, the download is going to explain to you how to go about doing it, but I'll just share with you the best thing is, again, go to your doctor, get a script, and it doesn't matter how young they are. Um, if they get diagnosed with having incontinence, there's a great chance that you would be able to get them covered by your insurance. So um, again, I just wanted to highlight that it's not just the diapers that could be approved it's the wipes and the gloves and uh, the bed pads and there's another thing the booster pads maybe a lot of you are not familiar with them but the booster pads are like diaper inserts and they um there's just like an extra source of protection that can go inside the diaper um, just to provide that extra absorbency at night in particular when sometimes you know the the diaper may leak so yeah, a lot of you guys didn't know that. So I wanted to make sure I highlighted each individual um, different products that come along with the incontinence products. And so whether that's a local uh, medical distributor or a lot of them are national distributors, that that's what they do, that's their business and they ship it to everyone around the country um, and you can get it delivered right to your doorstep. So just wanted to make sure you guys knew everything that was uh, encompassing the incontinence products. Okay, and 
we are at bath chairs. Now getting the right equipment for your angel and your bathroom. This is really important because these are customizable. There's a lot of things that you have to take into consider when you're getting a bath chair, which is um, the appropriate size for your angel and what you're working with in your own bathroom in your home. So there's lots of different products that are available. Um, I have the Otter for Nathan, and we don't use it very much right now. He's pretty good about it right now, but I imagine when he's a little bit older that I, I might. So I have it, you know, just in case. But there's lots of different varieties of of uh, bath chairs. And so I just wanted to highlight several of them for you so that you can see the different option. There's also um, the insert that you could move not only over the bathtub, but over the toilet seat as well to help them, you know, get on or off if, if they need that support. And there's also this chair, I don't wanna say in blue because there's three blue, four blue ones, but there's a, it has a hydraulic lift on it and it's uh, operated by remote control. So again, we lots of accidents happen in the bathroom. And, you know, as especially as a parent, I'm concerned about that as I'm getting older, I'm not gonna be as strong as I am right now. And so these are really good options to help you and help them as well, keep them safe in the bathroom. And then again, with the uh, hydraulic lift can help set them down into the bath and then get up when it's done. And again, parents, we love our kids. They are our absolute number one, but I also have to remind you to take care of yourselves because we're in it for the long haul and it's not easy and it's very physically demanding. And so if we can get the right equipment to help us with our everyday life, we can last longer because how many of us are trying to outlive our kids, right? That thought gives me anxiety. We have to do everything we can to take care of ourselves because we have to take care of our kids. And so I think the perfect solution for me was making sure I have all of the right equipment. All right, one of my favorite topics to talk about is the enclosed safe beds. Now, I've also included beds that can travel with your family. Now, <clears throat> the, the Kaiser Benton bed, which is the bed on the left, how I'm viewing it, um, that is the enclosed bed that I have for Nathan. And I understand, especially if you're new to the world of special needs, that the sight of it might be a little shocking to you. Um, I know for me personally, it was. Um, you think, you know, you don't want to enclose your kid, but I have to tell you, when I discovered Nathan had climbed out of his crib and went into the kitchen. And when I heard all the rustling around, I went into the kitchen, flipped on the light, and I saw him on the floor and he had pulled two knives out of the, out of the dishwasher. And they were just sitting on the floor. And if that doesn't scare you half to death, I don't know what will, but from that moment on, you know, and then him falling out of the crib, I was so determined to keep him safe at night. And so for me, that was the solution. I wanted that bed so bad. And, you know, it did take me a while. Getting that bed really took me the longest out of all of the medical equipment that I had gotten for Nathan. And I had to learn everything about the process because I was denied and they didn't want to get the bed for him. And, you know, they give you all kinds of excuses. And so that's really when my, my determination and my perseverance had served me best. Um, you know, for those of you that have known me and follow me on social media and I share my story, you know that I am very results driven. And 
we stopped, I stopped making seizures, I stopped his acid reflux, I stopped his constipation, his health is doing amazingly well, he sleeps all night. I had to get results and, um, you know, I wasn't stuck on the ultimate result, what it was going to be, whatever it was going to be, but I had to make improvements. And so I really just poured my heart into following up. That is one thing that you will need to do on this journey. Um, you know, you have to understand that when we're working with the medical equipment providers and our doctors and nurses and getting all that paperwork, it's very time consuming. And we have to understand that the people that we're working with, all the staff, doctor's offices and medical equipment, they have a lot of other people that they're working with as well. So even though this is our number one priority, our kids are our number one priority, they're dealing with a lot of, you know, clients as well. So the more persistent we are following up with phone calls, getting a buy when date from them, say, okay, I'm gonna send you over these documents. What do you think the turnaround time is gonna be? Then a lot of times they'll give you a date and they'll say, okay, let's, by the following Friday, let's see if we heard anything. Give me a call back and we'll see where we go from there. So doing things like that will help you along this journey because it takes time, it takes follow-up, and you just have to do the work. And I promise you, it will pay off. Your perseverance, it absolutely will pay off. So that is my uh, story about my Kaser Benton bed for Nathan. I did a product review um, of the bed for Kaser Benton, and you can find that on YouTube, and you can also find it on the Kaser Benton bed. Um, I think it's kaserbenton.com or kaserbentonus.com on their website. It features the video that we did and, and shared our experience with the bed. But I also wanted to share some of the other products like the Safety Sleeper, and um, there is Beds by George and the Sleep Safe Bed and the Safe the Safe Place Bed. They also travel. So the Safety Sleeper and the Safe Place Bed, you can take those when you travel. That one is um, the blue one down at the bottom. That is the safe place bed that is inflatable. And so you can take that with you guys when you travel on vacation because you shouldn't not have to go on vacation, right? All right, so let's see. You know, getting back to the initial thought, if, if, it, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, these beds, um, some of the other things that families have also suggested is um, making the door, the bedroom door, like a country kitchen door. And, you know, where it's just the half and you can close the door, maybe turn the knob on the other side. And this way it will keep them secure in their bed at night and then have whatever bed that you find is, you know, the best to fit your needs. Remember, this is an individual journey that we're on. So even though we're doing it together and we're trying to be very helpful to one another, at the end of the day, whatever works for you and your family is most important because it's your life, you're living it every day, and, and you have to make it as comfortable and as convenient for you and your family. So I just wanna highlight that for you guys because I know a lot of people have outside influences and um, you know my suggestions, it's great. I'm sharing with you what I do, but ultimately, do what you think is going to be best for you and your angel. So next slide, we have adapting, adaptive feeding tools. And so I've just shown you a lot of the different products that are out there. And I have to tell you, there is stuff coming out just about every single day in this category. Um, there's so many different adaptive feeding tools. Like I have, there's here, Easy scoop bowls, adaptive spoons and forks, 
uh, slip proof trays. Now these are good too, because I don't know if your angels like mine, but Nathan, he loves to, to just throw stuff when he's done with it. He's just like toss it or he'll push the, the, the plate right off his tray. And so these, um, they're made of silicone. They're slip proof trays. There's a bowl down at the bottom and in the top, that's just a little, a little plate on it. So they're silicone, they, they make for, for easy cleanup. They don't let them toss the food. So um, there's all kinds of shapes for the spoons. Um, I actually have this spoon right here in, with the black handle and it's just an easy grip for him because our regular spoon is just too small. So a larger grip is better for him. Now, if you need the spoons that have a curve to them, there's tons of options for that as well. And on the right, the top right, there is a spoon that helps with the tremors. So if that's something that you need to take into consideration, that spoon is available as well. Okay, so number eight is the car seats and harnesses. Now, for those that, for those Houdinis that can get out of everything, and I shared with you guys my story a little bit ago, how Nathan could just get out of any car seat. And one time I was driving and I just happened to look in my review mirror at him. And do you know that he was completely naked? <laughs> How many of you guys can relate to that? I've heard other stories. And so, oh my gosh, I, I, to this day, I have no idea how he did that, but he got everything off. I mean, just imagine if I had gotten pulled over. Um, excuse me, officer, I have no idea how that happened. So, this time it was his clothes. Thankfully it wasn't him, but he has gotten out of everything. And so I had to find the different options that were out there. And so some of the options that I have here for you guys are the, um, on the top left, it's the Easy On Harnessed Invest. And that I did get for Nathan probably several years ago. And that is not a one size fit that's all, there is several different sizes. So to order that, you'll need to get um, measurements and stuff like that and consider the type of car that the harness is gonna go into because it also secures to the back of the seat. So you'll have to consider that. There's also to the right of that, it's called the Ride Safer Travel Vest. So that's another option. And then the bottom right, is the Roosevelt Steam and they have the, the I think it's called like a five point harness that um, helps keep them in place. And you see the little latch up top that helps keep the seat belt on. But I, I had to get a new one for Nathan because he grew out of his easy on vest. And so I got the Churchill Standard, which is the bottom left and this one is customizable as well. You can get it with that vest or you can get it with um, the different harnesses. And I got it with the different harnesses. I didn't need the headpiece. So all of these things are customizable when you're in the process of working with um, the durable medical equipment providers, they will help you go through um, the different options of each product and you can let them know what your needs are for your individual with, with Angelman because yes, they may they may have they all may have Angelman syndrome, but they're all different and um, their needs are different. So that's one of the good things about working with your local medical equipment providers is a lot of these things are customizable based on your needs on their needs. And so that's what you're gonna to wanna to take the time to do. And I have been fortunate with 
uh, finding really great people that helped me go through all of his needs and I was able to get that. So definitely worth the time, but I just wanted to highlight with you guys uh, just these four products, but there are, um, there are several others. Okay, number nine, I have listed several different communication devices. And there's also here iPads and communication apps that can also be considered um, communication devices that would be approved. There's also the eye tracking enabled communication devices. And that's the one that you see on the, with the stand on the left, on the top left. Those are amazing. They, they track the eyes and um, that is also considered communication. And then there's also pod as well. And so it would be the software that um, could possibly get approved. Um, so I just wanted to show you several examples. Um, there are communication devices that um, like the bottom right, those are actual iPads, but because they come with the communication software, um, that's how we're able to get it approved because it's not just an iPad. Um, there's a purpose for it. And so a lot of times if you ask the insurance company or, or request something um, from your doctor and it says iPad on it, it probably won't get approved because you have to show a purpose. And so there's companies out there um, if you want to know the company for that one, let me see if I think I wrote it down. Um, I don't remember, but it is also best to work with a SLP when getting a communication device, because one of the things that, um, we had done was they did an evaluation to determine what would be the best product for him based on his abilities. And that's really important. Um, that's really important to work with an SLP because she'll be able to determine because there's so many more products than just what I have listed here. And, um, you know, depending on how well they can um, move their finger or whether they need the eye tracking, um, you know, or even the fire, the uh, Amazon uh, fire tablet for kids. There's, there's other apps on there as well. So my best advice would be to work with an SLP so that you can have that evaluation done. And another thing that I wanted to point out is that the communication devices there will be a, a time, I think it's every four or five years that you would be able to get a new product. So if they approve you, um, find, you want to ask what the term is on that. So they'll say, okay, well, we would be able to approve this. And then if their needs change and they start developing skills and they could work up to a different device, I think that term is five years, but again, it's all going to depend on your insurance provider, your Medicaid provider, all of that. But I just wanted to let you guys know that with communication devices, it's not like you get one for the rest of their life. There is a term and I, I think it's, uh, I think it's about five years or four years. So, and there's so many more options, but all right. So, Number 10 are wheelchairs and strollers. So I just wanted to show you some of the options that are out there. There's uh, on the left side, we have some of the conveyed strollers. Um, and that's what I have for Nathan. I have the con conveyed uh, easy rider, I think it is for Nathan. And it's pretty good. Um, we are now on our second one. He's, he outgrew the first one. And I think with the wheelchairs as well, um, I think it's about every five years that they are replaceable. And you can also find out when you have the, when you get your wheelchair, um, find out what uh, repairs will be covered 
Um, sometimes, you know, you might need the wheels repaired or, or the, um, the material gets ripped or, or things like that. So find, you want to know what would be covered under the repairs. But I think, again, it may depend on your state uh, insurance or Medicaid, but I believe it's every five years that you can get a new wheelchair. So I have also here different options of wheelchairs. So there's um, the, wheel the wheelchairs for the beach. They are called, uh, there's an, the all-terrain beach wheelchair, the Rollies beach wheelchair, and the sand rider. So these are just some other options as well, just to, to take them and, and have fun, get out, go to the beach, and, uh, you know, have your your support as well, because it's you know it's important that we take them out and and do things you know also, and these wheelchairs will will help us make it possible to do that with them. So, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. I hope you found this information helpful. And um, again, you can download in the handout section. It's called the ASF Download for Medical Equipment. And uh, that will walk you through step-by-step step everything you need to do from uh, contacting your doctor, contacting your local DME, who's the best person to work with. And there's also clinics that you can go to to help um, get your, your products customized and ordered. Awesome, Lizzie. Thank you so much. I learned so much and we do have a good amount of questions. If you have some time, um, I'll just start going through them and what we can answer. Great. If not, we'll make sure to get answers for people. I also want to make sure I didn't, I didn't say this, and this is one of the most important roles that Lizzie plays for us. Lizzie's also a resource director for the Angelman Syndrome Foundation. So if you ever need help with getting the process going on at need is products or questions about products or really any questions about um, Angelman syndrome altogether, she's available for you to connect with and talk with and she can walk you through this journey. So um, if you want to reach out to her, all you have to go is, do is go to our website and under ASF resource directors, request some time with Lizzie and she'll be able to do that with you. So, yes, so a, a couple questions here. Uh, uh, first of all, I, some people gave some shout outs for the Kaiser and Benton bed. They loved it. They, um, some people love their, um, their happy plates that you mentioned. Um, another one asked, at what age are other car seats or harnesses necessary? How do you determine what appro what's appropriate and do you work with the PT? Um, for me, it was when the problem first presented itself. When he was able to get out of his little car seat that he was in, I was like, okay, this we're done with this little car seat. It is no longer safe. We need to, for, to find a different solution for him. So I had gone through several options as well because even when you find uh, a different car seat, like I'll just share our story. When he got out of his first little car seat, I said, okay, we need something better. Um, my physical therapist had recommended a specific special needs car seat and it took a long time to get, but when we got it, it only took him a very short amount of time to learn how to get out of it. So that was good for a very limited amount of time. And then I had to get on to the next. And that's when I found the easy on vests. And that is better because it has to like cinch on and zip up and attach to the car. And that he was not able to get out of. So Lizzie, I'd be curious, just from your perspective, let's say I'm a parent who is thinking I need to probably, um, uh, start looking into any sort of product. We can use the example of the car harness, harness now. What would be a parent's very first step to start this process? So what you would need to do first is go to your doctor and um, tell them what you need. So a lot of these things, I would say start the process now. 
Um, if you think you want a safe bed, start the process now because it can take a long period of time. For me, it took just about two years before I was able to finally get his keys or bet in bed. And um, that was because I didn't know what I didn't know and yeah. I didn't get everything that I needed. Uh, it was step by step. And as when I was learning all of the steps, it took a long time to do it. So if you like these products that I recommended, um, get your list together. Say, I want, I want a different bed. I want, uh, an enclosed bed. I want the the car seat harness. I want um, all of these things and list them for your doctor and say, this is what I want and do a little bit of research. Go on the Ultimate Amazon Special Needs Shop. Look at some of the products that are out there. And um, because here's the thing, there's also different brands, different manufacturers that make this equipment. And so depending on the insurance company or the Medicaid program that you're with, depending on the state, they may only allow you to be approved by certain manufacturers or companies. Yeah. And so if you have in mind um, what you're thinking of, try for what you want first. And then they may come back and say, okay, well, I understand you want this, but this is what will get approved. And so then you can determine if that will work for you. Or again, another amazing option is the Angelman Syndrome Foundation Fund. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to, so I can mark that off my list. So yeah, the, <laughs> the Angelman, uh, the, the ASF Family Fund, which was just created uh, a year ago now, has yeah. one one of the most popular products. Um, if I had to say the top three things people write for are beds, adaptive um, bikes, strollers, and communication devices are the top kind of things where that we've been getting. So, um, so yeah. So uh, another question that, that's come through, and they're they're rolling through now, Lizzie. People are getting excited. Um, uh, I don't know if you can answer this, but can a stroller be classified as a wheelchair or be written for the same use? I don't know if you can answer that and it's okay if you can't. Um, the conveyed, it's called a conveyed stroller that we have for Nathan. So depending on the, again, the manufacturer and the insurance company, there there's a possibility because his wheelchair is considered a stroller. So again, it, it just depends on this, your specifics. But if that's what you want, I say go for what you want first. Yeah. So um, just so you guys know, a couple of people asked, will these links be shared for all the things that you've um, that you've talked about tonight? Absolutely. We will make sure to get that information to you all. Uh, this is a really good question. And one of those things that you don't think about until the question comes to you. But um, once again, I don't know if you can answer it, but I think it's important to put out there. Some angels share two households. Is it possible for equipment to be approved for both households? That's a really good question. Yeah, and um, if we don't know, we'll we'll definitely look and try to research to find that out. But it's actually something that's come up recently at the foundation as well. So I was just curious mm -hmm. if you had any insight on that. I don't have any experience with that. So for the person that asked that question, I will do some research on that tomorrow and get back to you. But it is a good question, and it's something that comes up pretty often. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, also, just so you know, people are raving, just raving about you right now. So you're amazing. Oh, they love you. Um, thank you. Uh, so one of the questions that came through is um, people were surprised that you can get a car seat through insurance. So that is possible. Yes. Okay. Now, again, then, it might be a very specific brand or manufacturer that they approve. But yes. And Nathan was very young when I got it, too. He was barely like three. So that's, I'm gonna have to get on that journey now because um, Jackson is now Houdini and is getting out. The other day we were driving on like the, the big highway to go to therapy and I turn around and the kid is upside down on the ground with his feet up and, I'm, and with, with his drink, just <laughs> taking his drink and spraying it all over his face. Oh and I'm going, I'm going like 55, 60 miles per hour because it's like the highway. And I'm like, well, what do I, I, what do, I do? I mean, <laughs> so anyway, I'll have to look into that. But oh um, so here is kind of a big question for you. But I think about from my perspective as well, because we're still, we have a youngster, right? He's still five. 
we're starting to think about a lot of this stuff. What advice can you give a family who is thinking about all these things that they need to purchase and that knowing just to pick up the phone and start this process, you know it's going to be long, it's going to be challenging, you're going to probably be denied, and then you have to appeal and then deny. What advice can you give someone to stay organized and persistent? That's a really good question. And it's a very important one because, you know, like you said, this is sometimes a very long process. It took me several years to get Nathan the keys or bet in bed. Um, but, and that's why I wanted to create this download so that when you're going through this process, you know step by step what you need to do, get the doctors on board, get the physical therapist and the speech therapist on board with you. Um, having the right people in your corner, supporting you, providing you with the letters of medical necessity, stating how much you need this for your child, what it's gonna do for them. I highlight everything for you so that you can stay focused in this process. And one good thing that you know I do at the beginning of the year is I have my goals and I have my personal goals, but I also have my goals for Nathan. And um, that is, you know, putting the medical equipment on there uh, or, you know, whether it's a, a swimming, um, that was one of our goals one year was to get him swim classes. And so we have our, we should have our goals for ourselves as parents, but we should also have goals on what we want for our kids and this process, getting them the right medical equipment is very important and it can take some time. But if you know like this year you want a bed, then go after it and then stay um, consistent with your follow-ups and through the process because it will be challenging. You'll have to remember to make those phone calls, set the reminders on your phone, okay, um, the durable medical equipment provider wants me to give them a call back on next Friday to see if there has been any decision made by the insurance company. So put it in your phone, make a note to yourself to follow up on that phone call because I know time goes by and we can forget about it. But that's what I would do to, to help stay organized. Lizzie, is there something specific that when you're, re when you're requesting this information, that you need to like have ready in like um, a digital file or something that they always request this. Like, you know, like if, if, it, if you're looking for a bed, looking for a stroller, the insurance company is gonna make you submit this, this, and this. Is there something that people can make sure that they're keeping available to always have that to make the process smoother? Yes. Um, one of the things they're always going to want is, of course, the diagnosis, the genetic okay. diagnosis. Um, and if you have an autism diagnosis as well, that is very helpful. Um, and if you have that information, you can provide it to your doctor quickly because, again, sometimes our doctors may not have that information or their staff might not have that information readily available. And so if you can um, communicate with the doctor's staff, because a lot of times they're going to be the ones that are taking care of this for you, um, have everything in your in your computer, like in your Google Docs or something that maybe is password protected, but so that you can say, OK, if you need this, I can email it to you right now. Um, and make sure that they have it. Again, it's the diagnosis, genetic diagnosis, autism, if you have it, uh, if you can get it, that's also very helpful because of the world that it opens up to you when it comes to getting therapies and medical equipment because um, with Angelman syndrome being so rare, people don't understand what our treatments are, what medical equipment is, but if you say autism or autism related, then they say, oh, okay. And then they have a tendency to work with you a little bit better. So one thing I wanted to make, to make sure to mention to everyone um, as well is, you know, Lizzie brought up a really good point that some of the physicians that we work for may not be 100% aware or know the best products or the best way to go about it. Our, at our clinicians at the AS clinics have created some sample letters that we 
have up on our website that you can give to your clinician. Like if you're looking for a bed, if you're looking for a stroller, um, just because we, we were getting a lot of questions about this. Now, these are not letters that you can take and go ahead and submit because they're not your clinicians, but you can take those letters and give them to one of your clinicians as an example of like, this is kind of an example of what a, a clinician who sees multiple individuals with Angelman syndrome would write in support of a bed or a, I think it's bed, stroller, communication device, and I think there's a couple more. So if you're interested in those, you can go to the ASF website and those will be there for you as well to help kind of, we're trying to do our best to make this process as smooth as possible for you because we know that it's probably going to be a long process when it comes to working with the insurance companies. So there was, um, there was a, a shout out to um, the, an individual said that their individual with Angelman syndrome is 23 and has outgrown a car seat. So they use this safety belt protector that goes over the buckle and it so far has worked really good for them. So if there's someone out there that was looking for an option, apparently that has been really, really good um, for them. So um, so I think that's the, all, all the, oh, send the link to example for the letter I was looking for. Yes, I, if, you, um, if you go to angelman.org and go under the AS clinic site, you'll be able to see those letters. You can also always reach out to me um, at the foundation. I'm more than happy I can email those letters to you. My email address is amore, M-O-O-R-E, at angelman.org. <clears throat> and I know that Lizzie is always very um, open and available as well. So Lizzie, any last like words of wisdom for everyone as we, we let everyone go for their evening? Um, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. I really hope you found this information helpful for me. It has really been a lifelong journey and uh, it feels like forever, but you know, I wanted to wrap it all up and deliver to you guys all of the key points that I have learned on this journey. I've been on the journey 12 years. It feels like a lot longer, but um, I wanted to simplify it for you and take away all of the key points from what I've experienced and hopefully this will help you to um, start tackling these things right away so that you can get them. It's a process, it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of follow-up, but you can get them. And again, one of the key points that I wanted to highlight is if we have the proper medical equipment to help them with um, you know, walkers or even standers, uh, AFOs, um, and a lot of these things I highlight in the download for you, uh, a list of the other products that could possibly be approved. But if you get started right now and don't wait until you desperately need it, um, start that process right now and start working on it. And then you can save your back <laughs> and, you know, because it's, they're so strong. My angel, Nathan, he is just so incredibly strong. And, um, you know, as long as I have the safety equipment for him, it really saves my back. And so I just wanted to share that with you guys. And, and again, I invite you to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, Angelman Today. It's everywhere. Yeah, no, but we're all in this together. So we sure are. Well, thank you so much. And for everyone that joined tonight, thank you so much. Um, tomorrow night, for those of you that have individuals who maybe in their teen years are moving into adult and transitioning, this is a session you don't want to miss. This session's all going to be about um, provide, uh, creating trust, doing grant uh, grantorships, looking at transitional living, everything for um, some of our um, older individuals with the Angelman syndrome. This is going to be a great session for you to make sure to join in on. There'll be a session this week on that. And then next week, we have another session around um, the different type of living situations for um, individuals with the Angelman syndrome that are adults. So you don't want to miss those. And then Friday night, it's everything IEP, whether you're a beginner, in the middle, towards the end, anything you have questions about IEP, we will have an IEP expert um, there on Friday night. So we have two more sessions this week. I hope to see you guys there. For now, Lizzie, thank you for your heart, your passion, and your dedication to this community. We are so blessed to have you. Thank you all very much for being here tonight. And I'll sign off by telling you all I love you, and I hope you guys have a great evening. Thank you guys very much.
Thank you guys. Good night. Bye.